Welcome to worship at our Savior's Lutheran Church in Arlington Heights, Illinois. Throughout our worship service today, we will be reminded of how Jesus sets us free. So let us begin our worship service with confession and forgiveness so that we may be released from our sins and be reflections of Jesus in the world. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sins, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, so that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us take a moment now for silent reflection and confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. By grace, we have been set free. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, let us rejoice. Welcome again to worship. I'm Pastor Pete, the lead pastor here at Our Saviors. Deacon Tracy and Pastor Rhonda are not with us again today. They are on their way home now from leading a youth mission trip in Oklahoma City. I'm thankful that while they are away, our musicians, Matt and Duncan, will not only lead us in song, but they will also help us with other parts of today's worship service. There are lots of things to look forward to in the coming weeks and months here at Our Saviors, 
Please check out our website to register for Sunday school, confirmation, adult education, and so many other events. A unique opportunity coming up next week is called Holy Beats. Pastor Rhonda and Lois Nelson will be leading a high-energy, fun class that will get your heart beating and your face smiling as you pound at the beat of music on your own stability ball. All equipment will be provided, but you need to register for the class. Thank you for your ongoing partnership and ministry. While the economy is unpredictable these days, your generosity is steadfast. Thank you for sending financial gifts to the church via mail, via mail, via text, and via our website. When you give a gift to the church, it's a gift that truly keeps on giving. Every gift that you give to our saviors is double tithed and shared with ministry partners around the globe. Thank you. I invite you now to bow your head in prayer as we get ready to hear God's word. Lord, let our hearts be good soil, open to the seeds of your word. When our hearts are hard, break the stone away. When our hearts are cold, warm them with the day. When our hearts are lost, lead us on our way. Lord, let our hearts be good soil. Amen. A reading from the book of Psalms. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. For he shatters the doors of bronze and cuts into the bars of iron. Some were sick through their sinful ways and because of their iniquities endured affliction. They loathed any kind of food and they drew near to the gates of death. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he saved them from their distress. He sent out his word and healed them and delivered them from destruction. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites! Does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 years long, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Did you happen to notice what my t-shirt says today? It says, One Wonderful Day. I'm wearing this t-shirt for several reasons. First is because we just heard the word wonderful in our gospel, which also happens to be the only time in the entire New Testament where the word wonderful appears. The crowd rejoiced at all the wonderful things Jesus was doing, our gospel said. We also heard the word wonderful in our psalm. 
The last verse of our psalm says, Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind. So with both of our Bible readings featuring the word wonderful, I figured that there's no better day than today to wear this t-shirt. But the main reason I'm wearing this shirt today is because right after worship, I'm driving up north to participate in a musical called, can you guess? One Wonderful Day. This musical was written to celebrate the anniversary of the church camp where I was a camper for many years and a camp counselor for many more years. I had not just one wonderful day at church camp. I had many wonderful days. And this coming week promises to be a wonderful week. I was looking forward to this One Wonderful Day musical for months and months. But then, just a couple of weeks ago, my script arrived in the mail. I'm still excited about the musical, but now I'm also a bit anxious. Let me show you how the musical begins, and then perhaps you'll understand my trepidation. This is an actual copy of the script. It says, scene one, stage right, one wonderful day. A single spotlight reveals Pete Warmanen, that's me, on the edge of the stage right with guitar in hand, he sings One Wonderful Day with his own guitar accompaniment. Did you catch that? The musical begins with me on stage all by myself. Now, as someone who does public speaking as part of his job, you wouldn't think that I would be all that nervous. But it's not every day that I'm on a stage, literally setting the stage for an entire musical with a bright spotlight shining directly on me. Plus, one of the first times I was ever on stage all by myself, a rather unfortunate thing happened. I was in the production, Annie Get Your Gun, and my character was announcing that Buffalo Bill was arriving. As I ran across the stage and shouted my line, I got a bit carried away, I missed a step, and fell face first into the railing. Here's the clip of me falling on stage. I think it was seventh grade. You know that phrase that people sometimes say before someone goes on stage, break a leg? Well, I almost did. I almost knocked the set over, too. Here's the same clip, but in slow motion, just for fun. Listen to that thud. Over the past couple of weeks, I've had that thud and that memory playing over and over again in my head. I've wondered to myself, what if I somehow slip and fall on the stage again? What if my singing isn't good enough? What if my guitar playing is just subpar? Doubts, worries, questions are swirling around in my head. We all have moments like that in our lives from time to time. When our doubts get the best of us, or when guilt overpowers us, or when sin and shame weigh us down. Our gospel for today points us to one wonderful day and to our one wonderful God who picks us up when we fall, who forgives us when we sin, and who sets us free to live each day anew. We heard in our gospel about a woman who needed to be lifted up. She had been bent over, unable to stand up straight for 18 years until Jesus saw her and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. Immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. Can you imagine? After 18 years of pain, being able to stand up straight for the very first time, 
it reminds me a bit of an experience that I'll get to have at church camp this week. One of the many ways that we experience confession and forgiveness at church camp is by clenching our fists while we think about our sins. I invite you to try that with me now. As you squeeze your fist, I want you to think about your sins of this past week. Or if you weren't too bad this week, then think of your sins from this past year. Think of the doubts that creep into your head from time to time. Think of mean things that people have said about you or mean things that you've said about others. Think about the brokenness of this world, the worries that sometimes keep you up at night. Think of things that you have done that you shouldn't have done and the things that you should have done but you left undone. And now, hear the words of Jesus from our gospel. You are set free. As you hear those words, slowly release your hand. It might actually be stuck and you might have to use your other hand to set it free. Now that's nothing compared to the experience of the woman who was bent over for 18 years, but it still gives us a sense of being set free, doesn't it? We can't forget about the reaction that the people had to Jesus healing this woman. There was a good reaction on the one hand and a not-so-good reaction on the other. The crowd was excited. The crowd was in awe. But the leader of the synagogue was indignant. He was angry that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, so he complained and he argued with Jesus. Isn't that something? Even after witnessing a miracle, even after someone's life was transformed, there was still someone in the crowd who felt the need to complain. That's what the song, One Wonderful Day, is all about. I'll be singing it for you at the end of worship today, but right now I just want to speak some of the lyrics so that you can really hear them. The first verse of the song says, Wouldn't it simply be super if for one wonderful day no one on earth were complaining and none would insist upon his or her way? Wouldn't it really be something if no one would argue or fight, think of how happy and peaceful we'd all be from morning till night. What a wonderful day that would be indeed. No complaining, no arguing, no fighting. Such important words for us to hear. Such an important vision to strive for, especially in these divided, polarized days. Immediately following our gospel, Jesus compares the kingdom of heaven to a mustard seed. He says it begins as a tiny seed, but then it grows into a tree. And then he compares the kingdom of heaven to yeast. Just a little bit of yeast, he says, when mixed with flour, causes bread to rise. It's no accident that Jesus moves from healing this woman to immediately talking about mustard seeds and yeast, little things that grow. It's as if Jesus is passing the baton to you and me, saying, I healed this woman, just one person in the crowd, now you go and do the same for others. Plant seeds. Help to lift people up who are feeling knocked down. Each wonderful day begins with something small, one caring conversation, one act of kindness, one transformed life at a time. I'd like to imagine that after the crowd dispersed in our gospel, that Jesus went back to the leader of the synagogue to have a conversation. I'd like to imagine that Jesus knocked on the door and said, so we had a little disagreement back there about me healing on the Sabbath. Can... Can we talk about that? Perhaps they came to some kind of an understanding. Perhaps Jesus planted a seed of healing and reconciliation in the heart of that synagogue leader. May we do the same for others. 
Jesus has the power to set us free from our sins. He has the power to set us free from guilt and from shame. And he empowers us to set the world free from smaller things like complaining, arguing, fighting. And when we set the world free from those little things, then bigger things like peace and harmony can grow. We are empowered, you are empowered to make today and every day one wonderful day. And the people said, amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship Your The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh, oh my soul, worship His holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh, oh, oh my soul, worship His holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your
sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. I'll worship your holy name. Lord, I'll worship your Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us pray for the church, for the world, and for all who are in need. O God, you are wholeness. Where there is division in the world, bring reconciliation and healing. Where there's division in your church, remind us that we are siblings in Christ. While we may not agree on everything, we are united in mission and united through your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you are the source of all life. Where creation cries out in distress, bring relief and renewal. Bless farmers, ranchers, distributors, and all who provide food. Nourish the land and all of its habitants. We pray for rain in places of drought and fire. We pray for safety for those experiencing floods and other disasters. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you are wisdom. Where nations and communities yearn for peace, bring hope. We pray especially for the people of Ukraine. We pray for people in our own country and around the world who are impacted by violence on a daily basis. Make us instruments of your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for all on our church prayer list, for all on our personal prayer lists, for those who are sick or hospitalized, for all who are grieving, and for all who are being watched over by caregivers and for caregivers who are empowered by you. We lift up names of people on our prayer list, either silently or aloud at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now here is the song that I've mentioned several times during worship already, One Wonderful Day. May the words wash over you like a benediction. And may the last words of this song be a prayer that you can live today and each day. One Wonderful Day. Wouldn't it simply be super if for one wonderful day no one on earth were complaining and none would insist upon his or her way? Wouldn't it really be something if no one would argue or fight? Think of how happy and peaceful we'd all be from morning till night. If you were to try it follow God's will. One little part of God's kingdom will start getting better until next to the spot where you're smiling, another of God's folk would be doing the same bit of trying. Soon I'm sure there'd be three working to break the old habits of arguing, griping, and sin. Think of it to be a part of peace making God wants a sin. No job is quite as important as working to bring about peace. Following Jesus' example, loving that just doesn't cease. Lord, give me the strength not to argue. Please help.
help me not to complain. That's mighty hard, and I know it, but you've given us power.